Hi guys, today's video is question number 4 of October November 2023, uh, paper 2 variant 2 and this question is from errors and suspense. Uh, the first part of it uh, requires you to actually correct the errors that are made by Rachel in this case. So they are saying Rachel is a trader. The totals of her trial balance prepared on 30th September 2023 did not agree and the difference was placed in a suspense account. Uh, Rachel later discovered the errors shown in the following table. They have given you this table and they are asking you to actually uh, correct the errors in this table. So the first error if you see here, uh, when you are correcting the errors, you need to make journal entries to correct the errors. Here they are saying a payment for rent 350 had been debited to the wages account. So when you debit the wages account by mistake, you need to credit the wages account so that you remove it from the wages account. And then because this was rent and rent is an expense, you always debit the expense account. So you debit the rent payable account to correct this error. Then they are saying the sales journal for September had been overcast by 90. When the sales journal is overcast, that means you have recorded uh, sales at a greater value than what you had to record uh, in reality. So you have uh, overstated sales by $90. So you, if, to correct that, whenever you're overstating sales, that means you recorded that on the credit side of the sales account. So you need to debit sales account in order to uh, correct this error and uh, debit sales and credit suspense. So debit sales $90, credit suspense $90. So basically that is how you will reduce the amount of sales. Then they are saying sales returns 110 had been recorded as purchases returns. Purchases returns are normally credited. So if you had uh, wrongly recorded sales returns in the purchases returns account, that means you have credited the purchases returns account. So in order to correct this, you need to remove this from the purchases returns account. So you debit purchases returns and you record 110 and you debit sales returns and you record 110 for uh, sales returns so that you record sales returns and you credit suspense by 220. Okay, in, in the next error, they are saying a payment for office expenses 18 had been recorded in the office expenses account as 81. So when you have recorded, when you have uh, made a payment for office expenses, that is $18 and you wrongly record in the office expenses account, that means you have overstated an expense. If you have overstated an expense, you need to, uh, uh, you need to uh, credit the expense account by the difference. So the difference would be 18 minus 81, 63. So you have actually uh, over recorded expense by 63. So you credit this expense account, office expenses credit uh, by 63. And you debit this expense account by 63. The next, uh, the next error here, a petty cash book payment 29 to coal a credit supplier had been recorded in the column for motor expenses. So when you have, that means you have wrongly recorded that in the motor expenses account. So you remove it from motor expenses, you credit the motor expense account and you write here $29 and you need to debit coal account uh, by $29. So whenever you are paying to your credit supplier, the double entry should be coal debit petty cash credit that was that was actually the double entry you had wrongly recorded this in the motor expenses account so actually what the error the the error they've done here is motor expenses debit petty cash credit so petty cash is correctly credited uh, but you have wrongly put that in the motor expenses account on the debit side so you remove it from the motor expenses and you debit the uh, account of coal. In the next part, they are asking you to make the suspense account. So we need to know this, that suspense is very easy once you've done all the entries correctly, uh, wherever suspense is coming. So suspense here is in uh, error number two, we have suspense. In error number three, we have suspense. In error number four, we have suspense. So we have suspense in three, uh, three of these errors. So you can just uh, simply, there's no difference in trial balance given here. So they're saying in the question here, prepare the suspense account, include the balancing figure as the original difference in the trial balance. We don't know the difference in the trial balance. So I'll leave one line for that. And then I record all these entries in the suspense account. In the second entry, when suspense is credited, you record this on the credit side, you write here sales and you write here $90. Uh, in the third entry, when suspense is credited, you need to write purchases returns slash sales returns and 220. Purchases returns slash sales returns and you write 220 on the credit side. 
In the fourth error, suspense is debited. So you record this on the debit side. You need to write office expenses. Um, and you write here 63. Okay, you need to notice this year that suspense wherever the double entry, like in the, in the second error, suspense is credited. So you record this on the credit side of the suspense account, but you write the name the, in the details. You need to write uh, the name of the account that is uh, that is being debited against this. So because suspense is credited, sales is debited. So sales is basically going, you need to write sales in the details for, uh, for this suspense account. So now you take out the difference in trial balance, which would be 90 plus 220. 90 plus 220 minus 63 would be the difference. And that would be 247. And I'll write here on top difference in trial balance. So now the total of both sides will be 310 on both sides and this account will balance on 310. Uh, this is for uh, the suspense account. Then in the next part, they're saying Rachel's draft profit for the prof profit before the errors were discovered was 18,243. Calculate Rachel's collected profit for the year ended 30th September 2023 after the errors in the table have been corrected if you guys need to uh, correct the profit right so whenever you are correcting the profit you should always um, you need to incorporate those uh, accounts which wherever uh, any account that comes in the income statement like for example wages come it comes in the income statement rent payable comes in the income statement sales comes in the income statement all of these um, all of these accounts are income statement accounts so uh, when i mark here all these income statement accounts are going to affect our profit so rent payable is going to affect profit wages is going to affect profit sales is going to affect profit sales returns is going to affect profit purchases returns is going to affect profit office expenses is going to affect profit motor expenses is going to affect profit so uh, i need to just correct my profit by these uh, you know these these values which uh, wherever the income statement accounts are being debited or credited so i start with uh, 18243 so rent payable we are actually increasing one expense and decreasing another expense so it does not have an effect on the profit so it's like when you're increasing one expense your profit will decrease because of that and you are decreasing another expense because of which profit will increase so basically both will cancel off each other so this one this entry is not going to affect uh, the profit in the second entry we are decreasing sales which means profit should decrease because revenue is sales and revenue is basically when revenue increases profit increases when revenue decreases profit decreases so i write here less sales which will be 90 dollars which i need to subtract from here Okay, and then they're saying purchases returns is basically being debited, which means purchases returns is decreasing. Purchases returns is always subtracted in the cost of sales section. Whenever we subtract purchases returns, we are reducing purchases returns. That means we are subtracting a smaller value from purchases. So that means cost of sales will increase. Therefore, profit will decrease. So I, I subtract, uh, I write here less purchases returns and I subtract 110. Similarly, sales returns is also being debited, which means sales returns is being recorded. Sales returns is subtracted from uh, revenue. So whenever sales returns, it's like uh, sales returns is going to decrease revenue because revenue minus sales returns is net sales. So that means uh, if revenue decreases because of sales returns, profit should also decrease. I write here less sales returns, 110. And then they are saying, okay, in the next part, we have office expenses, which means we are reducing an expense. If we are reducing an expense, our profit should increase. So I add this back. I, I, I write here, add office expenses. And this will be 63. In the last error, again, I'm decreasing motor expenses because of which my uh, profit should increase. So I write here, add motor expenses. So I write here, add motor expenses, $29. So now we'll calculate the corrected profit. Basically, we need to add, we need to subtract three of these. So 18243 minus 90 minus 110 minus 110 plus 63 plus 29 gives me 18,025, which is my corrected profit. I write here corrected 
In the last part, they are asking you state why financial statements may still be reliable if errors are present. So if errors are not significant, then financial statements are still reliable. The profit is still okay. Uh, we can still uh, rely on the financial information. So er if errors are not significant, financial statements can be uh, reliable. So that's it for this question. Thank you so much for watching.